Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. I've made it home. Brad, you and Tom have been up to a whole lot of stuff while I've been away. We've been pretty busy. Have you missed us? I've missed you guys. I've missed everything happening here. The Clio's not here at the moment because that's off having a few things done with it. But today is primarily about the return and the final drive opportunity with the McLaren Senna. It's had a whole host of problems that have probably been going on now for, I want to say nine months, something like that. Way too long. You took it out for an inspection while I've been in the US. Yeah. It's been out for the last week or two, having the final bits done to it, and it's now good to go. So today we can take it out for a drive and talk about those problems and talk about the whole process, why it's taken so long, and what the plans are gonna be next with that car. But before we get too much to that, the GT500 has arrived here. Of course, we've just picked that up. Yeah, this is so cool, having this here. And obviously like for me, editing the Gumball videos while yeah. that was out in the US, <laughs> now it's here and I'm seeing it in person. That's awesome. But sadly today, we're going to be saying goodbye to two cars. I think when you guys changed the brake pads on the E500, you talked obviously about the fact that this car was leaving. Today is the day. It's going to be picked up, in fact, in about half an hour's time or so. It's probably the cleanest it's been since the day I bought it. Yeah, I'd like to think so. It's I mean, had one wash, the first and last wash. It has, but it's come up really nicely. <laughs> it's, you know, I wish we had cleaned it more often looking at it now because it looks lovely when it's all yeah, shiny. It's beautiful, it's elegant. But it looks good. But also today, we're going to be saying farewell to the Cupra Born, the little electric car that we've been using as well. That's been a long-term loan, so to speak. It's time, though, for it to head onwards to new ventures. So goodbye to two practical cars. This never makes sense, does it? No, but we do have, <laughs> I mean, we have the Octavia VRS, obviously, and we still yep. have the Transit, which is just next door. So we do have some practicality. Exactly, a bit of shuffling around. Um, in terms of other things here, there's plenty to update on. We've got some new desks and chairs to put together. We've got stuff, all sorts of stuff. But let's say farewell to the E500. Then let's crack on and talk about the Senna. It's time to say farewell. E500 is going, Brad. I think Tom's the most upset out of all yeah. of us, but this car has done us so well. Various clips with the Clio in tow. It's... It looks lovely. It looks yeah. really nice. We should have cleaned it more often. <laughs> yeah, and we probably should have driven it more. We've only driven it about a thousand miles or so. But alas, it's the end of the journey with it for us, for now. Time for it to head on to new pastures. It just Goodbye. sounds cool as it goes out, doesn't e it? E500. Off it goes. Are you sad, Tom? Tom's yes. very miserable. I've just been shouting at him because we're, I know it's not doing anything. I know we're not using it, but it's just such a lovely thing to have around. There's some lovely V10 in the background as well. There is. Yeah. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> no, Tom, do, do we play that? No, no. <laughs> because the V10 also just did a big burnout backing out. And I can't not point that out. But um, yeah, sad times. No sooner has the E500 gone, but we've just had the call to say that the chap coming to collect the Cupra is about to arrive. It's, it's going. All, all at once. Yeah, everything. You can take this. Okay. I'm responsible for the last drive to take it outside. Yep. You haven't done too much. I've done you a fair bit. We've driven this a couple of thousand miles. Um, you were just saying that officially Cupra called the Bourne the hot hatch, right? Yes, I believe. I believe. I don't know the exact wording, but it's supposedly like performance hot hatch, yeah. something along them lines. The big thing that this has done from my experience, as opposed to the Taycan, for example, that I used to own, is having a range of 300-ish miles, slightly less, means that you can go somewhere and back, like as we often need to. The yeah. problem with the Taycan is, okay, my realistic range was just under 200 miles, but you never want to run it to zero, which means your max is realistically about 150. If you've taken it home and back the night before, yes, it auto locks. Um, all of a sudden, you can't go anywhere that's more than 60 miles away. Yeah. And we do quite often. Um, this has got around that problem. Um, it's not as small as it might make you think. It's not the biggest of cars, but it's the proportions make it look smaller yeah. than it is. Yeah, it's not tiny um, by any means. You've already unplugged it. So have we, have we been nice and given them 100% charge ready to go? Of course. How kind of us is that? 100%, 4,000 miles on the clock and yeah it's actually been really good and tom isn't a fan of evs we all know this no. he makes it he makes a big point of it in every single video he can but he has driven this a couple of times he has told he said many times that this is actually a very very good car it works it does the job cables in there stuff that it came with yep. it's very practical there are a couple of things i find super quirky and i'm going to just say right now the thing that annoys me the most about this car you can probably guess what it's going to be 
the oh, window switches. Yes. Yeah. To do the rear switches, you have to have pressed rear first and then do it. To do the front ones, that needs to be turned off. Yeah, and when you accidentally Couldn't, catch it and try and open your front windows and the rear start going, you're like- Couldn't they just have had a second set of window switches? Like, Cooper, or even just wind it? I prefer a windy thing yeah. than that. Cooper, take notes. We want normal <laughs> switches, please. But other than that, this car has been, it's been yeah. great. For the running around we've used it for, for, I mean, it's we took the, it to Bristol. We took it down to SG Motorsport and back. Yep. And I and think it, we had 5% battery You just left. get in, press the throttle. Yep, you're now turned on and ready to go. Done, just like that, in reverse, ready to drive out. Obviously, the shutter isn't open, but... Oh, yeah, I've, got, I've got music blaring oh, at oh. me. Where's mute? I don't even remember. Okay, again, this haptic type It thing. doesn't have mute, that's what I remember. How do I... Scroll. <sighs> Whose music is that? All of this stuff is trying to be so clever, and sometimes I wish it would just be a little bit more simple. Simple would be a touch easier. Anyway, let's get this ready to go outside and say farewell. I feel honoured to drive the last... I hope they can hear you. Are we not on mics? No. Oh, you can sorry. go back again if you want. I feel honored. <laughs> Are we doing it again? Go back, we'll do it again. <laughs> it's like deja vu. So I feel you... honored to drive the last 20 meters. And it's now not 20 meters, it's 40, because you've gone back and... That would technically be like 60, because we came forwards and back. Yeah, and... same thing. Anyway, <laughs> we're taking the Cooper outside. <laughs> See, See you, Cooper. Well, we've said goodbye then to two cars from the Schmuseum today, but there are plenty of things inbound. Well, we now have the GT500 here from the USA. My Zenvo is going to be here at the Schmuseum for the first time before long. We'll have the imminent delivery of the Lotus Amira, further afield, the Morgan Super 3, the Ferrari 296 GTS, and plenty of other surprises, mark my words. But we have said farewell to a few cars. Today, of course, plus also the AMG GTR Roadster recently, the Aston Martin DBS, and and one that I'm particularly sore about, the Lamborghini Huracan STO. But this is all to pursue other projects, whether that's things that are in build here at the Schmuseum or other external ventures, plus some project cars. We have had so much fun with the transformation of the Clio V6, which isn't actually here today as it happens. But I've been thinking of doing more things along those lines. I mentioned in particular a BMW 1M, but I've got plenty of other cars on my radar. When it comes to buying a car though, like the Clio V6 or like a BMW 1M or like the C63 Black Series or whatever it might be, it's important to know about the car that you're going to look at or potentially buy to save yourself time and money. And that's where the sponsor of today's video steps in, Car Vertical. With Car Vertical, you can run a check that will find out about inconsistencies with the mileage, outstanding finance, whether the car's been involved in an accident and potentially even pictures of how it looked to save yourself from buying a car that might now be completely rebuilt without you knowing about what it had been through in the past. They're connected to all sorts of different government registries and insurance databases, which means access to a whole host of information. They can also find out about the MOT history, for example, here in the UK, which is the annual roadworthiness check to see if there have been any advisories or any fails and what those might be so that you just know in detail about this car before you head over to look at it and certainly before you buy it. I use Car Vertical myself on all of my recent acquisitions to make sure ahead of time I've been fully aware of what I'm going to buy and you can save 10% now as well using the link down below to go head over to Car Vertical. I thoroughly recommend running a check. You don't know what you're going to be able to find out. For now though, it's time to go and talk a little bit more about the Senna and to take it out at long last for a bit of a drive. The main story of the day then, the McLaren Senna. Now, while I was away, you guys took it to V-Engineering. We did, we've had a full inspection by Steve who was so knowledgeable. I don't think anyone could ever explain this car better. Yeah, and basically to get a second opinion because we talked quite extensively how the car effectively had some damper issues. Now, it had its third year service at the very start of this year Shortly thereafter, unfortunately, it picked up uh, some small leaks and threw up some errors and the ride was noticeably wrong. It became, it became like driving, in a way, a Rolls Royce. It was super floaty and just all over the place. Yeah, not what you want from a super track yeah. focused supercar. It wasn't doing what it should do. Um, Q inspection at the dealer, basically deciding that it needed some new dampers and actuators, I want to say. Actuators, accumulators. Yes. I accumulators. Get on the yes, turning. The accumulators, that was it. This and the LT have needed different things. Anyway, parts, like everything with these cars, for GT exhaust, for example, SLS parts, everything 
have been on major back order and it took a very long time to get through the parts that were needed, hence going in the meantime to the engineering to do the secondary inspection to basically conclude the same problem. Those parts finally arrived. The car has spent the last 10 days or so, I believe at McLaren Hatfield, which is why it probably wasn't here in the videos that you've been filming with the Clio V6. Correct. Maybe it had disappeared at some point. It's now back, but since it's been back, it's not been out for a drive. Q, we're gonna take it for a drive. Anyway, first things first. CTEC, smart charger, unplugged. This is always such a peculiar system, isn't it? Yes. Plugged into the Very. nose bridge. And how flimsy this is. You always think you're gonna break it, but you just have to press on the I car try to not it. touch this as often as possible. Yeah. I'm like, Tom, you can do this one. <laughs> just in case. Let me yeah. shuffle this out of the way. Um, but basically, we'll go take this for a short little drive, see how it feels. Because the funny thing is, at this point in time, I've not driven this car in full working order since November last year. Really? 12 months. We're a year because later. Because it was parked up in November until the service in January. Didn't drive it in the meantime. Then the next time I drove it was when we found the issue, about five miles later. Yeah. And, and I drove it once in the meantime because we confirmed that it would be okay to drive it at slow speed. So I did a short little pootle around central London. Fast forward to now, 12 months later, and it's time <laughs> to drive it again. How many miles do we actually have on here? I, well, we've done two. I, it would help if I unlocked it. Yeah. <laughs> we've been to V and back. True. So, I don't know. It'd be um, interesting. What we're we on have? a grand total now. Wait for it. Keep waiting for it. Wait for it a little bit longer. Oh, man, wake <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, there we go. Three, six, five, one. I mean, it's, it's basically five years old. In two months' time, this car's five years old. That's the first issue it's had. Um, and we'll talk more about what you can do to stop that because there are general recommendations which McLaren should really tell everybody more yes. about with these cars. Um, but I'd like it to do quite a lot more miles now. It needs to do some more miles. Relative. You know, yeah. I'm, you're never going to do 5,000 a year in a car like this, but I'd like to really? do... We might do 5,000 in the next year to add it out. <laughs> daily it. Daily even, we're dailying the center. Right, let me get this started. <laughs> and then I'm going to come around here. <laughs> Tire pressures, it's a Senna, they're always a bit low. Do you know what, when you hop from one car to another, you always forget like what's on what side. Storks, buttons, controls. Should we pull it out? Yeah, can you do it with the doors up? No, I need you to shut that door down. Oh. <laughs> Off on an adventure in the Senna. The spaceship. Here we go, out in the Senna. First thing I have to say is that I'd forgotten how raw the car can be. Yeah, I mean, and, the camera work is going to be interesting right now. <laughs> yes, and we obviously have to speak so loudly to speak over it. Yeah. But having not driven it in full, normal Senna functionality for a while, you do forget how rough something like this is in yeah. terms of the ride. Now, I want to explain what I was saying before, which you and I know, of course, now, but didn't know before. But with this car, like with McLaren Super Series cars, it has a hydraulic suspension setup. Yeah. And effectively, the best thing you can do with the hydraulic suspension setup is that every time you drive it, to run it through the different modes, to run the car, to get it through, cycling through, to try all of the different settings so that it doesn't effectively seize up. So what you want to do is go into Active Dynamics. Um, the left toggle is the handling toggle. At the moment, we're in comfort mode. You want to drive it in comfort for a bit, then you want to drive it in sport for a bit, and then you want to drive it in track for a bit to just cycle through it all. And it's something you don't instinctively think about. You just jump in and drive the car, right? But it's healthy for it to go through those different settings, to go through those different modes. Um, we've got the powertrain toggle on the right side, currently in sport, which changes the gearbox stuff. <laughs> it pulls you everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, it's. It's a very, we've said it before, Tom and myself, when we took it to V, it's such a raw experience. You, there's not really any words to, to describe no. the experience of being in the centre, unless you can experience it. Just kind of cling on a little bit and go, go with the ride. Yeah. <laughs> in sport like this, it just bumps over everything like you wouldn't believe. Um, I've spoken often about it. This is not just looking at the camera jumping up and down. Yeah. I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. This is not a car that you want to do long drives in. I mean, I drove it six hours once from Munich to Switzerland, Andermatt in Switzerland, and that was quite the um, 
intense experience because you feel so shaken. It grabs so wow. much. But isn't this what makes something exciting? Because it's extreme. Because it's just over the top and ridiculous. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about this car. It's well, such a yeah, watch out for them. It's such a unique experience. Like there is nothing you can do to explain to, to someone what this car feels like. It's firm. It's sharp. You hit bumps and it hurts. Yeah. But that's what makes it so fun and so special. It's ridiculously raw, and I had completely forgot what this is like. I often said in the early days with this car that. If you want to go out in a car for like a one-time experience, you know, like a, a full sense of occasion experience for all of your senses, just jump in here. Just jump in here and go drive this thing down a road like this. Um, or alternatively, take it to a racetrack, obviously, where it is brutally fast. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know, having not really driven it for a while and being a little bit cautious, it will be really fun to back-to-back -to -back drive this with the Zenmo. Yes. I mean, that would be really fun. They're quite different. Different, but both have huge wings, lots of downforce, lots of aero, and savagely raw experiences. Yeah. The Zenvo even more so, though. The Zenvo is so much louder and more intoxicating than this. This is almost, in some ways, clinical in comparison, the way it does things. This is like, so, I've got a good analogy here. Think about going in like a GT3 or a GT3 RS compared to this. Okay. That's like this compared to the Zenvo. That's, that's a pretty big jump. Yeah, but let's reference back to that when you go in the Zenvo for the first time. Yeah, we, we, have to, we should put that on camera. I think we need to get our experiences, Tom and myself, just to see what it's like, your first see ride what we in the think, Zenvo. Because I still have not been in the Zenvo at all. So this is where the road opens up and... Oh, it's nuts. <laughs> it's fighting for traction. Short shifting, I often get told off for short shifting in videos, but you actually get better traction, and in a car like this, you just need to. You need the traction, yeah. If you can find traction, you need to use it. <laughs> I don't like playing uh, and taking unnecessary risks, so. I think this is the hardest bit of filming I've ever had to do. Yeah, just holding your camera in one place. It's like, don't drop the camera. <laughs> Try and keep you in shot and whatever we're showing. Yeah. And you're not making my life easy. No, well, hey, we're behind a... Uh, a much more docile drive now, so yeah, smooth and easy. We're actually heading to McLaren Hatfield, which is, I believe, left here to yeah. go and say hello. And I've actually got to settle up some bills for the work that they did. <laughs> so, so woo, <laughs> money to spend. <laughs> yeah, not not the kind of money I like spending, but it is what it is. Hey. Oh my goodness. Out so, onto the dual carriageway. I was going to say, the road's a bit busy, isn't it? Yeah. Like all those those dreams of putting the foot down and accelerating. And we have traction fully on at the moment, which because... <laughs> the way it shakes everything when you get over about 7,500 RPM. Yeah, this is vibrations, rattles, shakes. Yeah. In second gear, you can get to the speed limit. Just silly. Absolutely silly. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> this doesn't happen like very often in cars. Every now and again, but this is just. just gotta, yeah. Just gotta enjoy it, right? You just have to sit back, try and relax, and enjoy. Enjoy the drive. Yeah. Mad machine. We're all good. All done at McLaren. Yes, we've popped in here at Grange McLaren Hatfield, who have helped with all of the work on this. Oh yeah, there's an Artura there as well. There is. Need to drive an Artura soon. But um, yeah, big thanks to them for their help and work next to Aston Martin. Anything nice inside? Oh, there's an old Vanquish there. Yeah, it was interesting. Oh, 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 oh. hello. DB7 comes straight past. <laughs> cool, it blue. I mean, yeah. Do I just go for any car that's blue? I think so, yeah. Do you see something blue and you go, yep, yeah, that one, or purple. So that these blue or purple. Go. Yeah, so drive back home from now. Hopefully, we get back before it's dark. But, um, all good, here we go. We need to drive this car more, clearly. That is the big takeaway from today. Drive the Senna. Or from the last 12 months, maybe, I should say, is that this car just appreciates being driven, being out on the road, being used. Um, it's the same with all modern cars, really. As soon as you leave them standing, the gremlins begin, 
whether it's electrical things or whether it's um, just hydraulics and seals seizing up, you know, stuff that needs to be put through its paces. They're clearly building some stuff here beside Porsche, yeah. which is where I bought the 718 GT4 and the Taycan Turbo S. But I do not own a Porsche and I do not have another Porsche on order. Um, GT4 RS would be nice, but I, I don't really know how the Porsche game works. It's too confusing with how you yeah. manage to get allocations. They, they seem hard to come by. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think just buying other cars and using them isn't enough. Um, it's more about whether you... No, I, I did resell the GT4 with the dealer and I did also offer the Taycan back, but they had loads of them in stock at the time, which is why we sold it elsewhere. Um, yeah, it is what it is. What does that say? Why are you always... I don't know. Hang on, let me get some zoom. <laughs> are you going to try and film a bumper sticker from the bumps in yes, the center? Yes, yes. Why are you always bring me junk? What? <laughs> what? What? I'm very zoomed in right now. I mean, that's what I do at the museum. I just always turn up with junk. You do, yeah, you come in. <laughs> Guys, help me unload this, and there's junk. Every time I've been away and had stuff delivered to my home, the first day I'm back, it's like, Guys, I need a car with a load of space because I've got a whole load of rubbish to bring in. <laughs> Although this trip, I you decided to take the SF90. But this time I haven't, I didn't really have much at yeah. all to bring in. It's quite unusual. Just wait until I'm back in a couple of weeks time. And uh, yeah, we'll start again. The thing is, we, we've got a bit of a tunnel run in a second, but this car in the tunnel is no big deal. No. Because it's so loud inside anyway, it doesn't really add anything. You don't need a tunnel. No, it's just, you have noise, whatever you're doing, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna change anything at all. Only if it's really warm and you get some mega cracks, but it doesn't crack like the 675. It doesn't quite have that same on-demand whip kind of noise out of the engine, out of the exhaust, I should say. Oh well. There's not really much point in doing this, but we'll do it anyway. Tunnel run is a tunnel run. It, it gets no louder at all. No, it's just the same as it was. <laughs> Loud, rattly, vibrating. There's so many vibrations in here. All of that. Drop it down to second gear. It's ridiculous. You can't really, yeah, it's just it's just really loud. All fun and games though. It is. Did you know when you picked up the car from Hatfield, I got sent a photo of you driving it in the tunnel. Oh really? From another car, yeah. My eyes are on the road. That yeah, happens quite often. The clear V6 we took out, we were spotted. <laughs> I know where you're going. Thank you to all of you guys who keep tabs on what they're doing. I appreciate it. At least, <laughs> at least we're behaving. <laughs> at least you're behaving. I appreciate it. I actually asked the guy who took the photo of you. There'll here. be another one there. We've just been had a photo taken really? in the, uh, I, Octavia. I, I asked the guy who took the photo of you driving here. I said, was Tom behaving with it? And he, he did compliment and said, to say, yes, Tom was. Good. It's very easy to, uh, to kind of get led astray when somebody's watching you. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Me neither. Was he like offering something or trading or I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, my point was it's very easy to get led astray when there's a camera on you. So well done Tom for keeping it in check because in this car you do not want to get led astray. It goes wrong so quickly. So quickly. Anyway, shall we get back to the barn? We're home. We've made it back. In one piece? Yeah. And Tom, Tom worried that we might be dead or something because yeah. we've been like hours, sorry. Yeah, no, I was so worried that you were dead, I'd organized a transporter to come and collect all the cars. Oh, and there was, I think, you might have organized a transporter to come and find us, you know, to like yeah, check if we were us. okay or something. That's got inbuilt emergency calling, hasn't it? I don't think it does. There's only one way to find out. No, let's not find out. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it back. We have more things to do. <laughs> we do. We need to talk GT500 first. I need some lunch. It's like end of the afternoon. It's dark outside. It's lunchtime. Time to do some Mustang stuff. Mustang stuff. And by that, we don't mean hit a crowd. What we do mean <laughs> is attach the SeaTech smart charger connection. Yeah. Most likely via some O-rings directly on the battery. So we have a couple of clips here, which we will need to loosen and remove. I suspect we may need to pop those fully out without dropping them into the engine bay. <sighs> Nearly. Nearly. Okay, there's one. And there we have the battery. 
It's quite a small battery. It's quite small, yeah. yeah. I'm glad we both compared to like the, the one that was in the CC, we put in the C63, that thing's pretty it's twice huge. the size. Yeah, so that's actually quite a small battery, which is another reason why it'll be essential to keep this on a CTEC smart charger because after not very long that will probably die and then this won't start. Yeah. This was very Blue Peter esque. Here's one I prepared earlier. So yes, here we have our O-ring set up. We have the CS1 with the adapter cable on it and a couple of extension cables because I don't quite know how much we're gonna need. And we have Tim. It's a, it's a socket. No, it's a ratchet, not a spanner. Now, if we come over here, you've prepared this for me. I'm gonna point this out. So if it's wrong, okay, no, we're good, we're good. Okay, so we've got the negative on and we just take the positive one and which is pre-cut, by the way, that's yep. done by myself. But CTEC now do U-connectors as well, so you can get... Yeah, because some bolts you can't open. take all the way off on some, some cars. No, so that's why, if I'm completely honest, this one was on the GI Yaris, is where that came from. Right, there we go, so that's on. Uh, and that. that will then find its home, I suspect, sort of there-ish for the most part, which means you just pop that one off, plug straight in, job done. Hopefully we can see that from where the cover is, but we will <coughs> figure that out. Right, we're going to work back with, well, we're going to work from the, the plug. So hang on, I'm going to go and plug this one in, bring this on, and then we'll work out. I think one extension will be enough. For now, yeah. If it was to go up on a lift, then maybe not. All the yeah. long-term plans, I don't think this will be on top of a lift at any point, so. Ah. No, I suspect me and you will be taking this out far too frequently yeah. for it to be on the, exactly. on the lift. Exactly that. Straight into there and the GT500 is now connected to a CS1 and will never go flat, so job done. Okay, so small moment of realization that I didn't have the battery cover on, which, yeah, would make things difficult to get to. But yes. instead, we decided that would still have we'll to come this off out here. every time. You can stop popping the clips in. And we're gonna yep. cable tie this part just to this bit of wire, I think this is. Yeah, just some yep. wire here, just to keep it in a, a nice, easily accessible place. There you go. Those clips are all back in, that'll be there. So yeah, it would just be a case of open the bonnet, pop that one off, and job jobbed. There we go. So that's done. That's now there permanently. And then it would be a case of that open. Get this one back, which I tucked away earlier on. Straight into there. And we are charging. And then the bonnet can be closed down. Just make sure this cable here doesn't get caught. Yeah, you got that one. Job jobbed. So one Mustang charging. While I've been cracking on with stuff then, have you guys been successful with this? Well, if you watch the video, you'll find out. Well, I can't have watched the video yet. You've just filmed it. <laughs> As you can see, we do have a CS1 plugged in. It's all nice and- Okay, cool. Yeah, it's all good. Perfect. Good stuff. It's a true Shmima beer that's plugged into a CTEC, as it should be. It's alive. Exactly. It is literally alive. So the Fords are in that corner. I've been thinking a little bit about which way we're gonna shuffle this around because with the E500 going, <laughs> you don't have the key, so that means he did it from the office. It's literally alive. <laughs> nice one, Tom. You can tell he's excited about there being an American car here, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, buttons, press, press, on, start. Um, what I was going to say was I kind of want to bring back the Clio 1.2 to this side, because I want the like two Clios, Clio and Clio V6, yep. and then the Heritage and the GT500. And then I would like to have the Elise and the Amira. Just feels like a theme going on. And then we end up with C63 and SLS. Yep. There's a real theme here, isn't there? There's a really good theme. And then we have Vantage Roadster and GT8. Yeah, then we have the two Astons. Hmm. Is this where I set Tom the challenge of moving everything? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's like Tom's worst nightmare. He comes in and I'm like, can you put all the cars in different places, please? No, we'll leave it like this for the time being. It's actually brilliant that we've got so much space. Um, obviously, we've now got an empty electric charging space. Oh, yeah because we've got the CTEC charge storm connected to, and we've got no electric car at the minute. Obviously we'll have test cars coming in and I'm sure it's not gonna be long until there's another, elect another electric car here. Probably. That hint there's nothing or... on order. Not, no, currently there's not. There's nothing on order, books, nothing. What it's electric weird. cars could we get? We've had electric cars consistently for two years, but not now. Um, anyway, that'll be interesting to see how that evolves. Um, Team car wise, we've got the Transit and we've got the Octavia and then a bunch of cars in different places. Very happy to have the center operational again, albeit completely the wrong time of year for an operational center. Just Correct. to point that out. But it was great fun. But going forwards, you know, I'd love to now go and do a thousand miles somewhere, but there's nowhere I can do a thousand miles. No, I not can't. really. 
it's a bit too extreme for the cold winter months. Yeah, completely the wrong car for it. Um, and then I mentioned that the Amira is imminent. I'm now zipping off again, surprise, surprise. But as soon as I'm back, will be an update with the Amira. It should be just about built, I think. Exciting. Yes, so stay tuned for that. And then the Zenvo, which everyone knows is absent right now and has caused so much confusion because of the fact it's not here. I sent it back to the factory after doing the Super Corona Circle Tour. It was then ready two weeks later, which was when I went to the US. So I was like, given I can't go and get it, we might as well leave it safe at the factory where small company, it's cool to have the car there because obviously other people, customers can see it and whatnot um, and not have it registered here. So it's sawned, what it's called when you take it temporarily off the road, which is quite a normal thing to do. So as soon as I'm back from the Middle East, we might hop in the transit and go and get it, maybe. Yeah, that'd be cool. We've got a plan to figure out, can we yes. get over there with a the trailer and transit and bring it back? I mean, we physically can, yeah. and that'd be cool. Then we'll get it registered, have it here, or re-registered, whatever it's called. Have it here in the UK, drive it around, and again, wrong time of year completely, but these things are what they are sometimes. It will be what it will be. Yeah, so I guess that's it for now, is it? Have I missed anything? I think that sums up today pretty that's well. That's it for now. The Senna's back home. It's amazing. Until next time.